So here we go. So we, we're look, looking at formative. Now, sometimes you'll hear people talk about formative. Sometimes you hear people talk about go formative. So in the early days, I'm going back now, back to the, so the first time I heard about it was in 2016. It used to be called go formative. Um, and then I think early last year, they decided just to change the name of it to formative. All right. But it, it's one and the same thing. Okay, so we, the, we're going to have a look at, at what formative is. We are going to have a look at what makes it extra special. So it's got a number of unique features which really make it, it more powerful than, for example, um, Google Forms. We're going to have a look at the variety of question types. Um, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks, things that um, you know will help you get formatives made very quickly, help you get your formatives marked very quickly. Um, and we're going to have a look at, at a few exemplars. So I, myself, my bank of formatives consists of probably about 450 formatives of, of various kinds that I have created. Okay, and you'll see, I'm going to show you a short video clip that I made, so I do feature in the video, um, just of some of the ways in which I use formative. I'm going to show you the video because then at least I know I'm not going to talk for more than four and a half minutes on all the different ways that I use formative. All right, so, um, so I'm going to go onto it. So really what formative is, is it's, a, um, it's an online assessment tool that really is great for learner engagement. Okay, my three suggested uses of it are, for example, to create online tutorials. So you might have a section of work where, you know, there's a lot of writing involved in it, a lot of content, and, you know, your learners are just going to switch off after five minutes because they don't want to stand uh, they don't want to sit there and listen to you talking to them for 20 minutes, half an hour, or whatever the case may be, when in fact they can read through the questions and they can, uh, or sorry, they can read through the work and answer questions along the way. So online tutorials, um, where basically you can create a self-contained lesson and you, the teacher, can see in real time exactly what's going on, who's answering what questions, what they're getting right, what they're getting wrong, who's working, who's not working. Um, so that's one of the things then, online worksheets. So I'm going to show you in a few minutes as well, um, you know, how I used to operate in the old days before I discovered formative, okay? And then also tests and exams. So those are the three major uses of, of formative, okay? But you, you, you'll you see this, you can decide you know, what you want to do with formative, but that's how I use it. And by using formative, I, I completely avoid using paper, right? So the only time that I print anything in my, um, in, in, throughout the year is when I have to print a control test for, for my grade 10, 11, and 12. And when um, I have to print out exams. Other than that, we don't handle paper. All of the work that my learners do, they do it online on formative. So I'll be honest with you, I don't see a class workbook in my class. I know some of you are raising your eyebrows and thinking, oh my word, how does this guy manage to do this? But I can tell you that I know that my learners answer hundreds, goodness me, probably thousands of questions throughout the year. I know what each learner has done. I'm not checking to see if they can hold a pen upright and whether they can draw a straight line with a ruler. I want to see what's going on inside their minds. I want to see if they have understood the topic that I've explained and if they are engaging with the work. So the quickest, most efficient way of doing that is by doing it online. Now already, I think some of you might be sitting there and think, oh dear, you know what, I might as well log off right now because, uh, you know, um, from an under-resourced school, my learners don't have computers. Uh, our computer lab, you know, has only got 10 computers or whatever. Well, everything that I'm going to show you this afternoon, various worksheets, various exams, etc. Any learner can do that 
obviously it'll be great if they can do it on a on a bigger screen like on a laptop or a desktop or a, a you know a, a tablet or an ipad but i can absolutely assure you that every single formative you are going to see on the screen today can be done on a smartphone now let's be honest with each other your learners are all using TikTok and they're using Instagram and they're using Snapchat and all that stuff and they're sending WhatsApp messages. So we know two things. They have a smartphone and they have data. All right. So if they have a smartphone and if they have data, then believe me right now, you're in business, you can use formative and your learners can use formative. I know some of you are thinking, well, you know what, I'm, I'm using uh, Google Forms and, and it works well for me, okay? Um, one of the things about Formative is that it, it'll take up your entire screen, which is nice. A Google Form tends to kind of compress things into the middle of your screen, and you've got a lot of kind of open space to the right and to the left of what, what is being shown, okay? Um, Formative is all about intelligent marking, okay? So that, of course, is going to save you a lot of time. I promise you, your, your, your jaw is going to hang open when I show you how quickly you can mark an open-ended question. So obviously, you know, things like um, Google Forms, uh, you know, if you've, if you've got multiple choice questions, true, false, and things like that, uh, it's, it's going to mark quickly. But the big advantage here is the is the clever way in which formative will allow you to mark open-ended questions all right so many subjects you can ask the learners their opinion on something and for the most part if they can validate if they can substantiate their opinion you, you're going to give them marks all right um, and so I will show you how you can mark those extremely quickly very very importantly okay this is this is a massive advantage that formative has got and that is that you can see in real time what learners are doing. Okay, so I can see, for example, if I've issued a, a, a formative for my class to do, I can see that most learners are on question six or question seven. And I can see that most of them, you know, have, have got question one right. I can see that many of them have got question two wrong. Okay, so while they're actually answering the questions, you can actually intervene and you can re-explain things, etc. Of course, it, it allows you to, to see who's working and who's not. Okay. So if most of the class are on question 15 and you know Joe sitting at the back is on question three, then you, you can walk over and, and ask him if he's struggling or whatever. But I'll show you how you can actually send a comment to a learner with informative while they're working. So the, the comment will actually pop up on their screen. All right, and then learners get their feedback. Okay, so let's be honest, a lot of us are guilty of having given learners some work. You give them 20 questions to answer and you tell them, right, we're going to mark the answers in class on Thursday. Thursday comes uh, and you know you get distracted or whatever the case may be, and you don't get to mark it. Even worse is when learners have given you their, their class workbooks to mark, or they've given you worksheets to mark, and it's in your briefcase for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, and yeah, maybe in some cases doesn't even get marked. Well, with formative, that's not going to happen because the minute a learner clicks on submit answers at the end, they are going to see what their score is and they are going to see what their results are. Now, I'll show you as well that you can change your settings so that if you don't want the learners to see their results immediately, they won't get them immediately. Okay, and then another good thing about it is the individualized pace and attention. Okay, so slower learners can work at their own pace, faster learners can work at their pace, and along the way, you can give learners individual attention. All right, so various question types, okay. So using the free version, and in, in a few minutes, we, we're going to you know, go the route of, of, of all of you online. If you don't have a formative account yet, you're going to open a, a free formative account. And so these are all the different types of questions that you can set using the free version 
of formative, okay? So you've got drag and drop questions, free response, which means that learners can write, you know, write in their own words. They can, they can write paragraphs, they can write whatever they want, okay? Hot spots, you can have hot text, the good old multiple choice, okay? So multiple choice means that there's only one correct answer option in the list. Multiple selection means you can, for example, make, make you know, five statements and tell the learner to select the three correct statements. Short answers, show your work. Now, show your work. The name of that question type is actually just recently, I think this week, it's changed to, to drawing. So literally, with every kind of question, you can create a drawing space, all right? So it means that learners can draw pictures, they can draw graphs, they can... Um, they, they, they can write with their finger on their screen and show you how they've calculated something. True, false questions, video response questions, matching column. So this, this is a bit of a cheat move that I worked out, okay, because it's, it's not really a matching column function, um, although formative in, the, in, in the, the premium version does have a matching column um, function. All right. The other nice thing for all of you who are going to use the free version is you, you, can, you can grab a PDF or a Word document or an image or a Google Doc, and you can add questions to it. Okay, so that's a massive time saver as well. Right, so those of you who fall in love with formative like I did, and you prepare to pay a little bit of money for it, or you can get your school to pay for it, that's, that's what I did. In the early days, I, I paid for it myself. And um, I, I, I said to management, I said, I went and asked them, I said, would you guys pay for this? And I said to them, do you know what? Even if you don't pay for it, even if you don't pay for it, I don't mind. I'm going to pay for it myself because my time is worth a lot more than the little bit of money that I would have to pay for the premium each, each year. And, and they saw how, how many formatives are created. And so management said, yeah, here you go. We'll pay for you. All right. So don't be afraid to go and ask management for, for money. All right. OK, so additional with premium, matching column question type, categorize, resequence things. So things need to be done in a particular step. Let's say you teach hospitality and a, a particular sequence has to be followed for, for you know, um, baking a cake, all right? Step one, step two, step three, step four. So you can get the learners to, to resequence things. There's numeric, there's graphing, file response, audio response, inline choice, match table grid, and fill in the blank, all right? So as you can see, there are lots of different question types that you can have. So this is what you would see on your screen. When you want to create a new formative, okay? It's going to show you this. So these are all the different content types. So this is what you can add to your formative. Let's call the formative a worksheet, all right? So these are all the things that you can add to your worksheet. You can add, you can record your voice. You can record a piece of music. You can embed a website. You can add an image. So I use this a lot. A new function is this thing called paired passages, all right? which I must be honest with you, it's so new that I've not even used it yet. Then you can add some slides. So that can be a, you know, a PowerPoint or it can be Google Slides, whatever. You can add text, you can add video. So you can, you can video record yourself if you want to. And then you can add a whiteboard, which means you can, you can write. You can literally write on, um, on, on, it's almost like a blank sheet of paper. So that's what you can add. And then to all of these things, you can add all of these different types of questions that I've just spoken about a few minutes ago. All right. I'm going to show you as well how you can take an existing Word document or a, um, or a PDF, okay, and you can upload it, and then you can add space for the learners to add their answers. Now, the whole point of that is so that you can immediately see what your learners are doing, all right? And then you can also search for existing items. So that's um, things from your question bank. So every formative that you create, every worksheet, every test, every exam that you create, 
every single question goes into a question bank. So later on, you can literally go and pick questions from your question bank and you can drop them into, into a new formative. Okay. You can also create sections and then also very, very new is, and, and it, I must be honest with you, I'm not sure if this is, is available with the free version, but Formative now uses artificial intelligence to actually create questions for you, and it will even create feedback for you. All right. So at this stage, I'm just going to ask um, Fazila, are there any questions in the stream that I need to have a look at? No, yes, no questions, but I mm. have one question. Okay. So, uh, we, I think we're all excited for not yes. uh, having to have book 63 in our classroom. Yeah. But yeah. now the CA comes along and they want to see books. Are you still going to get to that part of how we can view the learner's okay. work and show it to the CA? Absolutely, yes, 100%. 100%. I'm so glad that, that you've asked that question. So I'm going to tell you now that... So I teach economics up to grade 12. Okay, I teach economics up to grade 12. And my task that I gave the learners in the first quarter that they had to do, which goes into their portfolio, it makes a part of their, their um, SBA marks for their portfolio. I gave it as a formative. So they did an online worksheet for me and the marks for that worksheet legitimately counted towards their SBA marks for their Grade 12 portfolio, my work's been moderated now. It went for provincial moderation, DBE provincial moderation. They liked the formative. For the last two years, I've been doing it like this, and my subject advisor has signed it off as being 100% acceptable. All right. So I, I think that's really exciting that, that you know, higher up to the, the, than the level we, we're at, over, over here, um, they're starting to see that, that this is the way to go. All right. So when we create a formative, okay, um, so I'm going to go onto the screen in a minute, but the, this is just for you to remember, the plus is, is the most important thing. Okay, so when we look at our screen at the top right-hand side, we're going to see this thing that says add. So when we click on that, it's going to say, right, well, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to make a brand new formative? Do you want formative to generate a worksheet for you? Do you want to upload a PDF or a doc to be turned into a formative? Do you want to import a Google doc? Do you want to import Google Slides? Do you want to enhance a video? Okay. And that then is how we will create a formative. So I will demo that for you in, in a few minutes. All right. So I'm just going through the slideshow quickly, just so that um, you can see what we are going to get to. All right. So also, there's, a, there's a, a fairly extensive library of existing formatives. So in my case, let's say that tomorrow I want to do some revision um, on perfect competition with my economics learners. Instead of creating one from scratch, I can actually go to the library informative and, and see if somebody has created one and has made it available um, to, to, to users, okay? I always recommend when you're going to create a worksheet or a test or something on formative, create a little text box description. In other words, what does this relate to? Is it, is it, is it grade 10, term one, topic two? Which, which pages in the textbook is it based on? So you can, for example, say it's based on pages, you know, 15 to, to 38. Also give clear instructions for, for your questions that you're setting. And also, from your point of view, as a teacher, when you're, when you're creating a formative, try and think to, as far as possible to make it self-marking. And I'll, I'll tell you why I'm saying that. I can ask learners to do a calculation. And the answer, for example, might be 5 rand 68, right? 5 rand 68. Some learners, so if I create the question so that they type their answer in the answer box, 
Some are going to type it as 5.68. Some are going to type it as 5,68. Some are going to put a RAND sign. They're going to go R5.68. Some will go R5,68. Some will go R space 5,68. So can you see? Then it means you do have to look at what learners have done. So what I would do there is I would create my calculation question and then I multiple choiceify it. So they still have to do the calculation, but then they have to choose from the list in the multiple choice what the correct answer is. All right. So that's that's why I've said here, think self-marking as far as possible. All right. So strategies for engagement with formative. Um, so I, I'm more and more now have been using formative rather than I explain some work and then like a typical class activity where you might have explained work and then you tell the learners, you write on the board, you go, right, now you must do page 65, activity one and two, and it must be done by this Friday. Okay, sounds familiar. So what I used to do is give the learners what I call student-paced formatives, which means it's like saying, right, do activity one, and it must be done by Friday. But now more and more, I'm planning my lessons around a, a short formative that, that basically has maybe five to 10 questions. So what I do is I explain stuff to the learners, and then I, I feed them question one. So just one question appears on their screen at a time. So question one will appear, and I say to the learners, right, Remember, I told you at the start of the lesson, you need to be concentrating, okay? No drifting off, no watching YouTube videos on your iPad now or anything. you got to listen to me. Right, here's question one. I want you all to answer question one. You've got 30 seconds to answer. And then literally, I see how everyone's answered, and I shout out. I go, right, there are two people who haven't answered yet. I'm giving you five more seconds. Please answer. And then they do. Okay. And then if, if there are any learners who got that question wrong, I know I need to re-explain that, that, that thing to them, okay? I think it's a good idea to include summaries before some questions, and I'm going to show you as well a flipped classroom um, uh, tutorial that I created for my learners on a section of work called the balance of payments. It's, it's got a lot of information, and honestly, I didn't have the time to spend four lessons on it, in um, for grade 12 and frankly they would have been bored to tears if they had to just listen to me explain all of those terms so I created so I went the flip classroom route I created a set of google slides and I then took those google slides threw them into a formative with a whole lot of questions okay so um I'll show you what I mean by double decker multiple choice questions. It's it's really just kind of where you you kind of make three statements, let's say statement A, B, and C, and then the learners need to select the correct um, option, as in only A is correct, only B is correct, only C is correct, or A and B are correct, or A and C are correct, or B and C are correct. Okay. Then I'm going to show you the auto grading and partial credit function. Um, if we've got time, we're going to have a quick look at the rubrics function as well. And then this is, is an absolute game changer. Okay. Rapid marking of open ended questions. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So literally, you can have 100 learners giving you their opinion. And you can mark that all of those learners work in like less than two minutes. All right. Okay. And then when it comes to grading and feedback, I'm going to show you what we mean by forced submission. And I'm going to show you the options for showing the marks and feedback um, for, to learners. And then some settings for tests and exams that's important. And I'm also going to show you how you can actually print a hard copy of a formative as well. All right. Just as a backup if you need it. Okay. I'm going to show you as well how to issue a formative um, 
So the, the two main ways in which you would issue a formative are either as student paced. So that means basically it's like giving the worksheet to the learner and say, right, there you go. There are your 20 questions. Answer them. Take your time. All right. Teacher paced means literally you, the teacher, dictate how long the learners have got for each question. So you're literally drip feeding one question at a time. Only one question will appear on their screen. All right. And then um, I'm going to show you how the learners access the formative either from a link in Google Classroom. So formative works beautifully seamlessly with for Google Classroom. So you can see how they can access a worksheet or a test or exam via Google Classroom or using their formative login. All right. So yeah, let's let's go formative. Okay. So what I'm going to show you is is all of the the things that are possible with the free version okay but maybe what we want to do before we go on to that is just to show you how to create your own formative account okay so we're going to first do that and then i'll come back to what is possible with the free version all right so it's a bit tricky because I've been using Formative for many years, and you can see that it's it's actually pinned onto onto my um, my uh, web browser of choice, which is um, Google Chrome. All right, but for you, all you need to do is you can type in there Formative, okay, Formative with an E, and so when you go onto Formative. It's going to give you these options, okay? So for those of you, if you don't have a formative account yet, then you would want to go the route of sign up, okay? So you would go the route of sign up and, and you must uh, select teacher. And I recommend that you use your Google login, okay? It just makes it much easier. So rather than creating a username and a password that you're probably going to forget by tomorrow afternoon, rather just use your Google login. Okay, so when you sign up, it's going to ask you how you want to sign up. Obviously, you must sign up as a teacher, and then um, it's going to ask you as well. So it's probably going to be very confused now. It says sign up. It's going to be a bit for 10. You are already signed up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So it's, it, it knows I already have a formative account. All right. Um, all right. So I'm just going to quickly look in the chat stream in case anybody does need help with that. Okay. Just having a sip of water. All right. Okay. So ladies and gents, so I'm going to quickly show you what is possible with the free version, okay? And then, and then we, we, I'm, I'm going to let you experience formative as um, a learner, and then I'm also going to show you how to go about creating a formative and so on as as a teacher. All right. So, uh, let's go over here. Right. Just go formative. Oh yes, yeah. So here we go. So this is what I wanted to show you. I just lost out there. Okay. So to see what's possible with the free version. So I'm going to show you now what is possible with the free version. If you kind of want to follow along on on your side, if you've now opened a, a teacher account, you'll see that at the top right hand side of your screen, it will say Enter Quick code and all you do is is you just type that that code g n a u y m in and then you'll be able to see the formative but i'm going to show it to you on screen now anyway okay so that you can see what's possible with the free version so let me go into my formative account all right so this is what it looks like once you've signed up as as a teacher on formative Okay, so on the left hand side, you've got this panel, um, home, just 
really takes you to those items that you've used most recently, okay? This one is where it's all happening. So formatives, and I strongly recommend that whenever you create any new fo um, formative, remember I told you earlier, all you do is you go to add, okay? So whenever you're creating any new formatives, make sure that you're putting them into the relevant folder, all right? So for example, if I wanted to create a new formative for my grade 11s for their lesson tomorrow, I would go to the folder that I've created, and in that folder, I would now go add, and I would create a new formative, all right? So, so this over here, formatives, that's your, should be your folders with all your various formatted, then classes, okay? This will now show you your various classes and what they have done most recently, and it gives you an overview of what the marks are for, for those, for that work. This is really, really useful. Reports, so this is great for intervention, and I've been using it more and more um, to, to actually report to, to learners at least to report to parents if I need to, okay? So this is what it would look like, okay? So it'll show you um, what has uh, been issued, okay, to the learners, and then you can actually see what a particular learner has scored for that, that formative. So it, it, it's automatically marking their work, and it's automatically creating a record of what the learner has scored. So think about how powerful that is for, for intervention. So you can, you can filter this in so many different ways so that it shows most recently done to that which was done furthest back in time. Um, you can set all kinds of filters to, to filter out worksheets, tests, etc. Okay. All right, and then the library that I spoke about. So you can go and you can find um, formatives that have already been made by other people. Okay, so you know, let's let's say you have a, a lesson on um, well, here's one on, on parts of speech. I don't know, maybe maybe I'm gonna type in here. Um, uh, let's see if there's something on Romeo and Juliet. Okay, I'm just having a Look, yeah, maybe there is, maybe there is. Oh, well, there you go. Somebody's already created a formative on Romeo and Juliet Act One. Okay. Um, in fact, many people have created some. Okay. So make that your first port of call. Instead of, you know, recreating, you know, reinventing the wheel, go and have a look if somebody's already done the work for you. Why not? Okay. So those are the main things that, that you would be interested in at this stage. What's very useful is at the bottom here, you've got support and you've got resources, okay? All right. So let's, let's go. So ladies and gents, what, what I would like to do is I would like for you to, to experience doing a formative and um, for you to see what's happening um, on, on my side. Okay, so I'm going to go here to, to, to my demonstrations folder. I've created some, some formatives here. Okay. Um, sorry, so I said I'm going to show you the free version exemplar. So, so I'm going to show you what is possible with the free version. Okay. So I, I chose as my theme so that there are two views that you've got here. What I'm looking at here is the edit mode. So in other words, this is kind of the, the back end, literally where you're adding your questions, you're adding your content and all that kind of thing, all right? Then you've got preview mode. So I want to show you this worksheet in preview mode so that you can see what, what a user would experience, okay? So we look at the student preview. It allows you to preview it on on a on a large screen like a you know a, a desktop or a, a, a um, what do you call it a laptop or something or on a on a tablet or an iPad or even on a cell phone so you can see what it looks like so I'm going to show you what it looks like on large screen 
All right, so please note, what you're seeing here has been created with the free version, free version, all right? So as I said to you, I always like to start off with a text box, all right? So I, I give the thing a, a title, and then I kind of give a little background. Well, what, you know, what is this format all about? Is it a worksheet? Is it a tutorial? What have you? And then I give some instructions, like answer all the questions, all right? So here we go. So the learner would answer all of these questions. So we've got true, false questions. We've got a multiple choice question. I've dropped in an image into my question and made a multiple choice question out of it. Okay. This is what I call a double decker multiple choice question. So I've, I've created three statements, A, B, and C. Okay. And the learner has to choose the correct combination of these correct statements, all right? So if you really wanna make your learners study hard, that's the kind of question you give them. So that was a multiple choice question where only one of these options can be correct, all right? Oh, and also, this is helpful. If learners are trying to decide which of these it is, they can cross ones out, they can go, well, it's, it's not B and C, it's not, it's not, uh, yeah, oh, okay, so it's not B and C. I don't think it's A, B and C, so that limits it down. I, it could be A and C, it could be A, B. I don't think it's that one. So, uh, so let's try that. It's not that one. So then they'll say, okay, I want this one. I think this is the correct option. All right, so it's got this nice kind of a, a crossing out function for, for the learners. Right, this is a multiple selection question. All right, so identify the two correct statements. So only two of these statements are correct. So the learner has to choose the correct one, uh, the correct two, okay? Now, here's an open-ended question. Why do people take the stairs instead of the lift at the Eiffel Tower, okay? And I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, I'm gonna demo how quickly it is to answer all of these uh, responses, all right? So as you know, there could be many, many different answers here. All right, now, I've said draw a picture of a house. So in the show your work, okay, the learner clicks on that and I've said here, okay, draw a picture of a house. And I've said here, the word picture has been purposely spelled incorrectly to demonstrate that errors can be fixed while the assessment is in progress. So you think about that. The number of times you've set a test or an exam, you've given it to the learners and, you know, it's, <laughs> they're all busy writing. And now you get told, oh, there's a spelling error on page eight or uh, the numbering is incorrect, whatever. The great thing about formative is you can work in the background while the learners are actually taking the assessment. If you can do that, think about it. I've already set, I've already made a worksheet for my learners where I've, I've created eight questions and they're busy working. And while they're working, I just add another two questions. I, I added question nine and I added question 10, okay? Anything else, I don't know, like let's think about Google Forms. I don't think you can do that. You've, once, you, once you issue your, your, your Google Form, that's it. It's got those questions uh, and you can't really change anything. All right, so this show your work means that the learner clicks on that box and it brings up a drawing page, okay? And so the learners can then scribble and they can draw and they can do all kinds of things in the space. And then they would click on done. And then you obviously can mark it. Another open-ended question, why is Paris better than Rome? Okay, then you can drop in a video. This is all on the free version. You can drop in a video and then ask questions relating to it. You can drop in an image or a screenshot uh, in this case, I, I, took, I took a screenshot of an article about the Eiffel Tower, and then I just dropped in questions everywhere that I wanted the questions to be, okay? And those questions appear on the side uh, panel, all right? Then this is my little workaround for matching column questions, okay? So a traditional, I went and typed this up on a, on a Google Doc or Word Doc, and I then literally just dropped in the questions there. And, and I said, right, what you have to do is type in the correct letter. All right, so there you go. 
And then once again, a free response. So these are all the things that you can do with your free version of formative. Okay. So ladies and gents, let me just go back here now. All right, I'm just gonna check again if there are any questions. No. Nothing, okay. Right, so ladies and gents, let's go back here. Okay, so wh what I would like to, to do now, okay, is, is I'm going to issue a, a general knowledge uh, or a little general knowledge quiz that's literally, I think it's got four questions, okay? Four questions and it's gonna be student paced. Now, how I would normally do this, how I would normally do this if I'm, so I use Google Classroom, okay? So all that I would do is I would, is I would go onto this general knowledge quiz and I would go, by the way, I decide beforehand what kind of formative it is, okay? Is this an assignment? Is it a benchmark? Is it classwork? Is it do now? Is it homework, interventions, independent lab? You name it, okay? And, and more and more, I've been using this this year so that when I look at my class progress, I can say, you know what? I only want to see the marks for the tests that the learners have done. Or I only want to see the marks that they've got on their worksheets. Okay, so that's a, a tip that I'm giving you now already is when you create a, a, a um, when you create a formative, decide what kind of formative it is. All right. Okay, so if I assign this to so my, one of my classes are going to be very surprised getting some work now. So you've got two choices. It's either student paced or it's teacher paced. Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to issue it as a student-based activity. And I would, for example, issue it to, to, to a, a class, okay? So like my grade 12 and three economics class, whatever it is, okay? So in fact, I'm going to take these little guys because I don't think they're going to worry about it if they see this. So I would click on 10.4 economics. So this is hooked up to my Google Classroom, okay? Now I can decide when they want to see their marks, okay? So do I want them, so once they click on Submit Answers, do I want the responses to, to remain visible or do I want to make it hidden? Do I want them to see their score after they've submitted? So don't ever select instantly because, for example, it, it literally on the screen, if they're getting it wrong, it tells them. So think about it, it's multiple choice. They click on an option and shows it's wrong. Then they try the next option, it's wrong. Next option and it shows green and it's right. Okay, so I never use instantly, all right. So the other option is don't show scores, or you can show the scores when closed, okay? The other thing, return correct answers. So after student submits, or you don't show the answers, or when the formative is closed, okay? So those are your options. So what I would do now is I would go, okay, sign and post it to Google Classroom. So if I do that, it's gonna go to Google, directly to Google Classroom. So my learners, uh, just don't worry about that where it says, oops, something went wrong. It's just a nonsense. Okay, so it's saying, right, here you go. And I'll go, okay. And so what would happen, just get rid of that error message. So literally, as these learners start to, to do the work, as they, so once they click on, um, once they open the formative in Google Classroom, so I'll just show you quickly what it's looked like in Classroom. So literally, here it is. Uh, okay, no, not there. Let's see, uh, classwork. Still stream. Okay, 
uh, for some reason it's not showing up in the stream. I don't know if it's just not updated, but but it would be floating at the top here. Okay, so you can see today, for example, I issued a formative exactly the same way that I showed you now, and it appears in the cl classroom stream. So the learners click on that, and they immediately um, will be able to start working on on that worksheet. All right. Okay, now none of you are in my Google Classroom, so I would like to, so I'm just going to close that now. Okay, so they can't actually do it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assign this as student paste to all of you. Okay, and you're going to do it. And the whole point of this is so that you can see what the teacher sees in real time. So I'm going to issue this to guest students. Um, I'm going to leave the settings as scores and answers, and I'm going to go assign. Now, ladies and gents, you can take your cell phone if you want. Okay, you can take your cell phone and uh, just a second, uh, guest students. Oh, here you go. So, guys, you can. You can use this guest code. So if you have got your formative account, if you have set up your formative account, um, you can enter the guest code at the top of the screen. But I'm going to go and drop this. I'm going to go and drop this off in the chat stream. Okay, so I'm going to drop it in the chat stream, and you can do this formative. Okay, so. If you click on the link, it will allow you to, to, to do this four-question quiz. I'm going to show it as a QR code as well. So those of you who would like to do this formative using your cell phone, there you go. You can just use your QR code reader, and you can, um, you, you can so let's just try that again. So you can use your QR code reader to actually access this formative. Okay. So what I should be seeing now in the next few minutes is a few people joining this formative. So it'll be great if I can get, you know, even if it's just four or five people to to um, do this quiz. It's you know, don't don't worry about whether you get quiz answers right or wrong. It's literally just. Um, it's literally just so that we can see what is going on. All right, so I'm showing you my screen. So what I want you to see now is that I can already see that, that Amy has answered question one, two, and three, and she got question four wrong. Just by the way, if I don't want to show the names, if I don't want to show the names, I can actually go here to settings, and I can say hide the student names, okay? So I can hide the student names. Can you see what's happening? In real time, I can see the responses. Now, obviously, if this was a more um, involved worksheet, okay, with lots more questions, et cetera, then we're not going to see these being answered as quickly, okay? It's going to be a little bit more sedate. All right. So I've hidden the names there to protect the innocent, but I'm going to reveal them once again, okay? Okay. So I can... I can say no, I want to see who's answered. So um, I can also toggle between showing the percent or the actual absolute total. So I can see right. Um, Bianca has got um, has got three out of five, Mel has got four out of five, Amy's got three out of five. I can see here that Mel got question two wrong. Okay. Um, I can see that two of the learners have got um, have got uh, question four wrong, etc. Okay, so the great thing is you can see in real time what is happening and you can respond. Okay, now what I would like to show you is, is that you can actually give feedback directly to a learner while while they're working. Okay, so for example, over here I can go over here to to her question. And so the coldest ocean is blue. Now I can actually give her feedback I, and I can say, read the notes, okay? And I can give her the message. And now that's gonna pop up on her screen, okay? Um, 
this person over here, Amy, I see she's also got a draw. And you know what? I don't want to type a whole new comment. I'm just going to go, hey, well, you know what? It's actually stored the comment right there. So I'm just going to go, you know what? I mean, there you go. Read the notes for you as well. Thank you. Off you go. All right. Okay. There's some awesome stuff. Okay. So with regard to feedback, different different ways in which you can, in which you can um, feedback. Okay. The plus over here, the plus, says, you know what? You can actually voice record. Can voice record a response okay you can give an emoji you can drop in an image okay you can video so basically if i feel like i need to to give mel uh, an explanation then i can click on video and i can video record a response to her okay so so that's awesome okay so i'm just going to go here record audio well done mel that is the correct answer All right, so so on, oops, okay, so I should have gone add audio, but what it would have done is it would have added there and then she would be able to listen to it, okay. And here's a new, so I'm not sure if this is uh, available on the free version, but it can also now generate answers, sorry, it can generate feedback using AI as well. And that's very new, it's recent, and I've only just been experimenting with it now, okay. So, ladies and gents, so far, I hope that you can see the value informative in that you can see in real time what uh, is happening in, in your class with your various learners. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, so that was what we call teach, sorry, that's what we call learner paced. All right. So, it meant that each learner was working at their own pace. And once they were done, they clicked on submit answers and immediately, they would have seen what the correct answers are. Okay. Now what I want to show you quickly is, is um, teacher paste. Okay, so I'm going to go here. Uh, quiz two. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys quiz two, but basically what this is about is, and, and this is, I'm doing this more and more in my class now. I'm using formative to keep my learners focused on the lesson and the explanation as it's happening, okay? So I would put this instruction in my formative. I'd say, right, listen to the explanations and then answer the questions as they are released on the screen. So again, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to issue this as a teacher paste, okay? Sorry, I'm issuing it as a teacher paste and I'm gonna issue it to guest students and I'm gonna, so it says paste the guest students. Okay, and I, again, I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna drop the, the, um, the join code into the chat stream. Oh, all right, well, there it is. Um, so I should, I should be able to grab that. I'll just quickly pop that in there. Okay, so you can click on that to join, or I'll just leave it up for a, for a half a minute. You can use your QR code, so you can use you can use your phone to grab the QR code, or if you've gone on to goformative.com join, on your screen six blank blocks will appear, and it's going to if you just type in four B nine R N four, then um, you will be able to to join. Okay, so if we can just have another two or three people just um, to, to join, just so that you can really see the effect of it. You can do it with your cell phone so that you can still see what's happening on my screen. All right, so it would have been nice to have a few more people join, but it's it's fine. I'm I'm going to go on to I'm going to go on to start now, and so that uh, you can see how how it works. Okay, so what I do is I click on start now. Okay, so I 
am uh, teaching you a lesson where I'm explaining uh, what you need to think about if you are planning a lesson to Namibia. All right. So on these two people, okay. So, so on. So for these two two people who who are in my class, okay. This this is what what they are seeing. Okay, so I want to I want to view the responses as well. Okay, so I want to view their responses. So this this is what they're seeing on their screen. There's no question yet. So I am explaining stuff and I'm saying, okay, um, guys, before you drive to Namibia, you should always you know check that your car has been serviced and and so on. And um, my advice is that you don't take the N2 or the N3. You should um, turn off the N1, and then you must take the N7 up to uh, up to Vintuk. Okay. So now I've I've been explaining stuff, and now I've dropped this question to my learners, and I want them to answer. Okay. So these two individuals over here, Bianca and um, and Mel. You guys are going to answer. And now I can see in real time, I can see in real time, this class's responses. Okay. I can see what's going on. Beautiful. I can see the whole class has got question one correct. So I don't even need to spend more time on this concept. I can simply move on to the next question. Well done, class. That's great. I can see you all listening. Question two is on your screen now. So I was talking to you about the fact that we can use rands and we can use Namibian dollars in Namibia. Um, I hope you're all listening when I explain that because I've just dropped a question on your screen now. Um, please answer the question on your screen now. Oh dear, okay, so I can see that not everybody's got this question right. I can see that half the class has got it right, half of the class has got it wrong. Um, and so now I go and explain further, blah, 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 blah. And basically, I, I keep talking, I keep explaining until I see that everybody has got it right. And now I can move on. Guys, think of how valuable this would be in a subject like maths, okay? All right. Now, I want to point something out to you, all right? Over here in the top right-hand corner, it's showing me how many people have responded. So if, for example, I've got a class of 20 people, then literally this number is going to go up as people have answered. And so once I see it gets up to 25, pretty much I know that everybody has answered. Okay. So this is a multiple choice question here. Okay. So I can I can see how many people have answered. Nobody yet. Okay. All right. So there's one one person. Oops, what if I oh, no, it's right? Okay, one person has answered so far out of the three people that I've got in my class. Okay, so I can see here one person's got it correct, one person's got it incorrect. Let's see what happens with person number three. Okay, when it does this, it means this person is going to leave it un unanswered. Okay, all right. So we're just waiting for one person to still answer question three before we move on. I don't want to call out any names and embarrass anybody. Okay, we can move on. Okay, it's not so great, the responses. It looks like some of you are struggling with question three, but um, uh, I can tell you now that, uh, yeah, if you go and have a look at your map books, you will see that it's, it's the N7 that passes through Springbok. Okay, last question now. This is one where the learner is going to type in their response. Okay, they're going to type in their response. Now, what I need to tell you is that in my answer key, I've typed in the various ways in which the learner might have written their answer. Okay. So some of you will know this. Let's have a quick look. Okay, two people have got it right. That's fantastic. Just waiting for the last person. Okay. So I would carry on explaining and I'll say, right, guys, remember we looked at the map of Africa this morning and we saw that, uh, you know, the Indian Ocean is on the East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean is on the West Coast. So I want some of you just to think about that. Think about your answer before we move on. That's great. Okay, I can see everybody. Everybody's on board and I can now move on to the next thing. All right. 
Guys, so can you see the value of getting real-time responses from your learners? Remember, your learners can do this using their cell phone. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click end session, and I'm going to click on um, switch all students to student paste. And so now it means that for those of you who have, are doing this worksheet, right at the bottom of your screen, it will say there's submit answers. So if you just click submit answers, it's going to tell you what your score is. And you'll also be, be able to see what you got right and what you got wrong. All right. Okay. Guys, so any, any questions so far? Any comments? Nothing. Okay. Right, so let's see what else I wanted to do with you today. Okay, so well done to those people. Oh, guys, then I want to show you this thing, this demo to mark quickly. Okay, this, this is insane. All right. So I've literally just pulled out one or two questions that, that I, want, I want to use to show you how you can mark extremely quickly. Okay, so here we go. I've got this worksheet and here again, why do people take okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna release the, the, the worksheet to you guys as as a student paste and you're gonna answer the questions. It's not many questions, it's literally it's only four. Okay, right. So I'm gonna go assign, I'm gonna assign it as student paste, and this is gonna go guest students, I'm gonna assign it. Answers. Okay, so guys, please, I really would like, okay, let me copy this, and I'm just going to drop it into the chat stream again, okay, to join this formative. So ladies and gents, ready to show you the power, oh, fantastic, okay, love, love this, okay, ready made a formative for my family to answer to practice, awesome, 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 okay, right, that's great, love it. Okay, so let's go back here quickly. Um, so I'm going to show the QR code. So guys, really so that you can see the power of formative for marking open-ended questions. I'd love to get more than just the three people who have been joining in up to now. Please, let's see if we can get five people and you can do it on your phone. Okay, just grab your phone, use your QR code reader um, to, grab, to grab that um, QR code. Okay, and don't worry if you're getting the questions right or wrong. It, it doesn't matter, okay, at this stage. All right, so we've got, got the QR code. Love it if we can get uh, two more people to join. Okay, all right. So we're going to work with, um, with the three that we have got. Okay, that's all we can do. Okay, so... What I'm doing is, I, is I'm having a look at the responses. So remember, once again, I'm the teacher. I'm sitting up, issued the worksheet to my learners, and I can see in real, in real time what's going on in this class. Okay, so I'm going to send a message, and I'm going to say, um, "Doing, oops, sorry, I want to do that." Okay. All right, so let's just go back here. Let's just go back here. And I'm going to say here, uh, uh, you, you are doing well, okay? I'm going to send her that message of encouragement. Now, take a look at this. I can see what she's doing in real time. I can see, I can see what she's typing, okay? All right. So if if we can get if we can get these. Uh, other participants, also please to, to just give your answer because I want to show you how quickly I can mark everybody's question one, okay? So remember, we've got a whole lot of different opinions that are going to come through here. There's no single correct answer, all right? But we want to give credit for people thinking and expressing their opinion, okay? So, so uh, okay, there we go. Great. Thanks, Fazila. And if we can just have... Um, Peter, if you don't mind, just, just answering question one.
Right, so, so the folks who are busy with this, you, you can continue with question two and three. There's method to the madness. The more we get done, the more everybody will learn from this. Okay, so what I can do, so if, if I go into edit mode, okay, so for question one, for question one, these are all the various answers that I have put in that are possible answers. So formative, if it sees these words, save money, keep fit, quicker, for the views, fitness, faster, get exercise, it's going to mark them as correct, okay? It's going to mark any of those as correct. Now, the beauty is this, the beauty is this, okay? I'm going to go to, 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 to what um, Mel has typed, for example, okay? Now, Mel has said, yeah, it's safer. Well, you know what? That's also a possible correct answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the slider and I'm going to go, yes, I agree with that. And now I'm just going to add that to the list of possible questions. Now, anybody else, anybody else who said it's safer, it would turn their answers to green. So, Amy, if you don't mind, if you can just quickly go back to your question one, just go back to your question one and just type in there, it's safer. And you're going to see your thing is going to turn green over here your question one just change it to it's safer and watch how this is going to turn green because i've got this as an answer option accepted okay so it'll turn this to green now um you you can decide as well so now i'm going to have a look okay all of these people have answered question two now watch this okay I didn't actually, oh, so they've drawn a picture. Look at this, people have drawn pictures, okay? So, so people were drawing pictures and, um, I mean, if you can go back to your question, what is this question? Three, I think, sorry, question two. So if, if you don't mind just adding something to your picture there, just so that, so that people can see the teacher in real time can actually see what, what is happening. So it's a pity that I wasn't showing question two on the screen as the people. There we go. Look at that. OK, so as she's been drawing it, I can see the response. OK, so now can you see it says here, draw a picture of a house. And I've said the word picture has purposely been spelled incorrectly to demonstrate errors can be fixed while an assessment is in program. Yeah, I made a mistake. So I'm going into edit mode. I'm just going to fix it fix my spelling error because that's that's unacceptable. So I'm going to say, yeah, uh, draw a picture of a house. And the people on the other side, if you just click refresh, in fact, you might not even need to do that, you'll see that on your side, the spelling error has been corrected. Okay, the spelling error has been corrected. Okay, so if we have a look at question two, there it is, draw a picture of a house, it's been corrected. Now, from the teacher's point of view, I've said, right, I'm awarding four marks for this thing. I'm giving a mark for, are there walls, roof, door, window? Yeah, okay. So what I do is I go here and I see what she's drawn. I can see what she's drawn. Yes, there's a door, there's windows, there's roof, there's a house. So I can give her four marks. I just click on the slider and I can move on to the next person. So Constance, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to move on to the next question. I meant to move on to the next person. Okay, but, uh, that's not drawing us. Okay, look at this one. Okay, so just for fun, I'm going to go, okay, uh, you know what, that drawing's a little bit untidy. Uh, so I'm just going to give three marks. So I take the slider and I just go and click over there and I say, right, you get three marks. Okay. Uh, this person over here. Over here. Okay. So we've, what have we got? Yeah, Fazila. Okay, we've got a door, we've got windows, we've got roof, etc. Yes, I agree with that. So I'll give you your four marks. Okay. And of course, remember, you can type feedback. Now, here, guys, this is amazing. Okay. If we look, so I can click on totals. Okay. So totals gives me this kind of a grid view. Okay. Now, can you see that for question three, okay, it's showing all of these as wrong, but they're not necessarily wrong. Okay. The question here was, why is Paris better than Rome? Why is Paris better than Rome? I know there could be a hundred correct answers. I'm not going to try and put all of them in there. Please 
don't anybody change change your 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 answers here okay so what i do is watch this okay i could get get some long answers here. it's got more sites to see the food is better the public transport's better the buildings are prettier uh, weather's better you name it okay watch what i do i'm gonna go here i'm gonna click on this first one no wrong okay i'm gonna click on this answer and here this little pop-up box it says one selected i'm gonna go no select all <laughs> right so now it's, it's taking everybody everybody and i go yeah that's correct you guys are all right and boom i've marked everybody's work in one fell swoop isn't that amazing okay this person gave me a very short answer. So frankly, I don't think they deserve three marks. So I'm gonna give them two marks, okay? This one over here, Zila said Rome, okay? Didn't read the question very well. So I still wanna give her a mark. I'm not giving her three, I'll just give her one mark, okay? All right, guys, so that's how you can mark a massive amount of stuff in an extra extremely short space of time. Joe is visiting Paris on a shoestring budget, suggests how he can make his money go further. I asked the teacher and looking at all these various great answers, okay, they could all be right. How am I gonna mark a hundred learners correct answers without having to individually do this? Go on the slider, click. Next learner, move the slider. Next learner, move the slider. All I do, is I go over here, I click on any one card, so I can click on this person's, I can go select all, and I grab that slider, and I award the marks to everybody. And now what I do is I just go and have a look at those people, those four or five out of the hundred, who completely were off the, the, the page. They didn't know what they're talking about. And all I do, is a go and and I unmark them. So like this individual over here, I go, no, uh -uh, I'm not giving you a mark. That that wasn't a good answer. Okay, all right. Ladies and gents, it's, um, we're going to run out of time, okay? But I want to just quickly show you guys, just going to take you through the process very quickly of, of, of creating your formative, okay? If you haven't already created one. So... Once again, um, so decide which folder you want it to be in. Okay, so here are, here are all my folders. So I want, I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to go here to demonstrations. Okay, and I'm going to go add, I'm going to make a new formative. I just click new formative. Okay, and so I'm going to give it a title and I'm going to say here, uh, WCED demo formative, okay. and then I'm going to add instructions. But the plus is where it all happens. So I'm going to go plus. I'm going to go right. Let's uh, no, I don't want an image. I'm just going to go plus. I'm going to go uh, over your text, and I'm going to say uh, um, study your okay, study your notes page 8 to 15, okay, then I can add whatever I like to this text box, I can go right, add an image over there, I can go and find something, so let's go here, pictures, uh, add that over there, and there we go, let's edit it, Okay, so I've added that image, etc. Okay, so that's my text box. Now, for example, I want to create some questions. So I'm going to go here, right? You know what? I want to I want to add an image. I want to add an image. Okay. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to grab something from over here. Banknotes. Okay, I'm going to go there. Yeah, no, I've got five minutes left. I wish I had a lot more time. Okay, now take a look at this. 
I've dropped in an image. I'm now going to create some, I can do whatever I want here. Okay. Firstly, I'm going to say, look at the picture, look at the photo, and then answer the questions. Okay. Again, I can add in whatever I like. I can add even an image, whatever, within that. Okay. But that's good enough. Now, I want to add some image, uh, at least some questions. Okay. So, whatever I want. I'm going to go here, multiple choice, okay? Um, so my multiple choice, I'll say here, um, uh, is the rand in the photo, okay? Uh, is it a, a, so I could say, is it a yes? Is it a no? And then I'm going to delete these options over here, and I'm going to go. The correct option is no. Now, if I want to, if I want to add more multiple choice questions, instead of every time going on plus, I can just go. You know what? I'm just going to copy this. I'm just going to go copy. Okay. There you go. So I just copied it, and I can say, yeah, make a new question. Are there any all right. Okay. Now I can I can create totally different type of question. If I click on the plus over here, I can go short answer. Okay. I can say here again. Um, uh, who uh, uses the um, Okay. And then correct answer there. So you can say England, all the possible correct answers you can put in there. Britain, UK. So any learners who give you that as an answer, formative is going to mark it as correct. Okay. You can decide on changing the point value. So for example, you can make that two. Okay. And so on. All right. Wow, ladies and gents, gee, there's so much <laughs> that, that I would love to, to tell you, so much other amazing stuff. This really.